Hey, this is James. In this video, I'm going to go over using analysis plugins in the Monitor FX chain. Because the Monitor FX chain is global to all projects, you can set up a toolbox of analysis plugins and you'll always have access to them in all of your projects. One way of speeding up your workflow of getting signals to the analysis tools is to alias your hardware outputs. You can set up aliases that correspond to specific tools. As you see here in my channel aliasing mapping window, I have five and six are dedicated outputs to scope left, scope right, and seven through 14 uh, are labeled uh, span C through span J. And those go out to the corresponding inputs of span, which is a spectrum analysis plugin. You can utilize up to 64 channels in the monitor FX, so feel free to just add, add, add if you want. Uh, you can also save and load different mappings if you have a specific task that you find yourself doing. Once you have your aliases set up, you'll need to go to your plugins and open up the plugin pin connector and make sure that the inputs are set to the corresponding outputs uh, that you've aliased. So for span here, you see that I have uh, one through eight, the inputs one through eight corresponding to C through J. Once you have your aliases and your plugin pins in place, getting a signal to the analysis tool is just as easy as sending a hardware send because that's exactly all you have to do. So here I'm sending the kick to C of span, and I'm going to send the bass guitar to D. And then this allows me to look at the, the spectrum of both of them together. Another benefit of having the analysis tools in the monitor effects is that it eliminates the pre-delay that you might see visually uh, if you have anticipative effects on on the track that you are trying to analyze. So here you can see uh, this top scope is in the track and the bottom scope is in the monitor effects. You'll see that the top scope is some number of milliseconds ahead. Um, I guess it's probably you know exactly the number of milliseconds that I have the anticipative FX uh, set to uh, pre-buffer. And in critical applications, this pre-delay might, uh, might throw you off. Uh, if you turn off anticipative FX, you'll see that the, that the scopes are, are lining up almost perfectly now. Um, hard to tell as it's moving if it's exactly on, but it's you know within, within some very small tolerance here. Turning it back on here, you see that they're offset again. All right, I'm signing off, James.